We remember and honor our ancestors, praise and respect our elders. We remember and honor our ancestors, praise and respect our elders. We don't know what tomorrow will bring, but we pray for peace. church family and friends and welcome to our pre-recorded youth worship service for this Sunday October 24th. I am Minister Phyllis Givens and on behalf of our pastor Reverend Kamal Hassan and all the beautiful children and the wonderful people in our congregation we welcome you and thank you for joining us. Now let us get our hearts prepared for the service. You will be hearing an introduction and then an intercessory prayer by Jada Oates. come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you for who you are and all the provisions that you've made for us as people, Lord God. Thank you for holding our hands throughout this life, Lord God, and reminding us that we belong to you. And also reminding us, Lord God, that all that we go through is just a struggle, but to make us better and help us to grow in a more positive direction, Lord God. 
Thank you for mapping out our lives, Lord God, before we were even here. And thank you for creating a purpose for us, Lord God, in this life. Thank you for continuing to hold our hands, Lord God, and walk with us through it all, despite, Lord God, the ways that we may stray. We thank you, Lord God, for your patience with us, Lord, and your kindness. And we ask that you continue, Lord God, to just hold our hands, Lord God, and remain in our hearts and in our presence, Lord God, so that we may know, Lord God, to whom we belong, and we may be reminded to glorify your name, Lord God, in all that we do. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Please join us in the call to worship. People of God, you are welcome to present um, in, the of God. in the presence of God, no matter what has happened in your life. We worship the God who sees the end from the beginning and already knows the outcome of every situation. People of God, you are welcome in the presence of God, no matter how you look. We rejoice to know that God looks beyond good looks or accomplishments. Well, for social connections, God sees the heart. No matter who we are or how life has treated us. We are all welcome in God's house. Good morning, church. This is... This is, Nat this is National Energy Awareness Month. Out of the renewable energy sources, both solar and wind are the best for the future. future. They, they are fast growing cheap and do much less damage to the, to the nature. The solar cell is a device that converts light directly into electricity. The direct, the, First solar cell was constructed by Charles Fritz Fitz in in the in the eighteen in the eighteen eighties. By the end of the eighteen hundreds, American in, American in, inventors were were patenting the solar panel. It wasn't you. It wasn't until nineteen seventy three when Carl Boer. Built, built the first solar powered building. By 1984, the solar energy generated system facility was completed in the California Mojave Desert. It considered a, it, it consisted of a separate solar energy plants, which is still the 
which is still the second largest facility of its kind. By 2020, out of all the con out of all the countries, China was the top producer of solar energy. As of 2021, over three million homes use solar power in the U.S. California leads the nation with two two hundred thirty thousand homes in solar panels. The cost of solar panels in California is two is two point seventy three is two dollars in two dollars seventy cent per watt. So a five kilowatt system would cost about ten ten thousand dollars. Fortunately, Californians can qualify for the two for the twenty six percent federal tax credit. The few disadvantages of the solar panels are they don't work at night, they are not attractive, and they have to be professionally installed. Along with being one of the best sources of renewable energy, solar panels last 25 years, years or longer. Thank you. Good morning, church. Um, I'm Jada Oates. And the basis of my word today is just a testimony of the recent events I've been experiencing as a high school senior. Um, I think it's definitely coming close and God is definitely revealing a lot of things to me during this time. So I thought I'd share them with you. Um, I think the first thing that I've been experiencing that is so shocking to me is just how far away that my generation is from God. Um, especially when it comes to the things that I experience in school. For example, recently um, I had to report my AP Gov and Econ teacher for just misconduct with students and saying inappropriate things that make the classroom feel unsafe um, and also make me as um, a sheep of God, him being my shepherd, it makes me feel unsafe because the religion is being attacked and God's authority is being attacked in the classroom. And I thought I'd just touch on that just to give some insight on the things that we're facing um, as students and as children out here right now. Um, another thing that I've experienced recently in my science class, there was the reading of tarot cards. And I found that a bit disturbing as well because it has nothing to do with science. Um, and it takes away from the learning atmosphere, especially me, someone who believes in God, it's confusing because imagine if these things were presented to someone who wasn't as strong in the word as I am and they were being swayed in the classroom where we should be learning about things that are making us better humans. So I just wanted to share that and just shed some light on any students or youth who may be listening to let them know that even though we go into this world and we may seem different and we may seem outcast or black sheep because we don't necessarily fit in and relate to the things that are happening around us. It's not a sign that we should conform to what's going on. It's a sign that we should stand and strong in what we know is right and, and cleave to God who we know will direct us in the right direction. Thank you. Please join me in the call to confession. All saying, God, you see us as we are, as wayward sheep, well-meaning, yet weak, valued in love, yet fearful. We call on you, O Lord, to help us see others through your eyes. Please join me in the prayer of confession. All loving God, we are short-sighted, valuing appearances, shallow in our judgment, selective in our neighborliness. Help us to have good hearts, to learn about you every day and grow to be the kind of person you want us to be. Amen. Please join me in the assurance of pardon. All merciful God, we thank you for your steadfast love and forgiveness. Now let our eyes see as God sees to know ourselves and our neighbors through the eyes and heart of love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. And now before the second musical selection, I would like to read some announcements. These are very important. And the first one is that next Sunday on the 31st, 
we will have a congregational election meeting. It will follow immediately after service. So next Sunday, be sure everyone comes and, and be there for this election meeting. We do need people to come and serve, come and serve the Lord, come and serve with the deacons and the elders and just the whole body of the church because God needs you, the church needs you. So be sure to be there. Mark it on your calendar now, next Sunday, the 31st. And we have some very, very, very important news that everyone has been waiting to hear. So right now, yay, yay, yay. The church is reopening on Sunday, November the 7th. Now that is good news. That is a great announcement. I know everyone has been just away and apart from each other and not being close, but now we're going to have a chance to come back to church, to see each other, to say hello to each other, may not be able to touch each other, but just being in each other's presence and in the presence of God will be a glorious, wonderful day. So make sure you make it November the 7th, the reopening of the church. You should be getting an email or mail between now and the 7th that will have more details. So be on the lookout. And please, everyone, if you read your bulletin, if you get your bulletin, please continue to pray for several members of our church family. Some have had surgery, some have had losses, some have just having some health issues that only God could help with. So please continue to keep your prayers and say your prayers for all of our members and their families. And now we have come to the time when the word of God is proclaimed. Please join me for the prayer of illumination. Heavenly Father, as your word is proclaimed, please open our hearts and our minds to yield and surrender to your Holy Spirit. Purify our hearts that they can be filled with your love so that we see people as you do. In Jesus' name, amen. The sermonic text for today is 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13. I will be reading from the Message Bible. 
Please follow along in your own Bible. God addressed Samuel. So how long are you going to mope over Saul? You know I've rejected him as king over Israel. Fill your flask with anointing oil and get going. I'm sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem. I spotted the very king I want among his sons. I can't do that, said Samuel. Saul will hear about it and kill me. God said, take a heifer with you and announce, I've come to lead you in worship of God with this heifer as a sacrifice. Make sure Jesse gets invited. I'll let you know what to do next. I'll point out the one you are to anoint. Samuel did what God told him. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the town fathers greeted him, but apprehensively, uh, is there something wrong? Nothing's wrong. I've come to sacrifice this heifer and lead you in the worship of God. Please prayer yourselves, be consecrated, and join me in worship. He made sure Jesse and his sons were also consecrated and called to worship. When they arrived, Samuel took one look at Eliabab, Eliab and thought, here he is, God's anointed. But God told Samuel, looks aren't everything. Don't be impressed with his looks and stature. I've already eliminated him. God judges persons differently than humans do. Men and women look at the face. God looks into the heart. Jesse then called Abinadad and presented him to Samuel. Samuel said, this man isn't God's choice either. Next, Jesse presented Shema. Samuel said, nope, this man isn't either. Jesse presented, presented his seven sons to Samuel. Samuel was blunt with Jesse. God hasn't chosen any of these. Then he asked Jesse, is this it? Are there no more sons? Well, yes, there's a runt, but he's out tending the sheep. Samuel ordered Jesse, go get him. We're not moving from this spot until he gets here. Jesse sent for him. He was brought in, the very picture of health, bright-eyed, good-looking. God said, up on your feet, anoint him. This is the one. Samuel took his flask of oil and anointed him, with his brother standing outside watching. The spirit of God entered David like a rush of wind, God vitally empowering him for the rest of his life. The word of the Lord. The sermon theme for this quarter is the beauty of being. There is a beauty of being yourself because God delights in you just as you are. God sees us as good. No, no, very, very good and loves us no matter what we have done, no matter how we look, no matter where we come from. God knows our good, true self and wants us to live into that goodness. That is the beauty of being you. The sermon title is God Looks Into the Heart. Now I'd like to share a Bible story for the children. It's the same story, Samuel 1 to 16, but it's told in the Bible stories, every child should know. And this is called, let's see, here we go. And this is called a new king. Sometimes King Saul obeyed God, but he did not always do everything God told him. 
One day God told Samuel, I am sorry that I let Saul be king. He has not obeyed me. Samuel felt sad. He knew he had to give King Saul some bad news. When he found the king, Samuel told him, you have not obeyed God, so he will not let you keep on being king. Then God talked to Samuel again. He told Samuel to find a man in Bethlehem named Jesse. God said to anoint one of Jesse's sons by pouring oil on his head. That would set him apart as the next king. The Lord told Samuel, I will so show you which son to anoint. As God commanded, Samuel went to Bethlehem. He saw that Jesse's oldest son was a fine looking young man. Samuel thought God would want him to be the next king. But the Lord said, no. He said, don't choose a person by the way he looks. I don't choose people that way. I see their thoughts and know what is in their hearts. Then Jesse called his second son, but the Lord said, no. Jesse brought out his third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh sons. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Are these all the sons you have? No, Jesse answered. There is one other, my youngest son. He is out taking care of the sheep. You see young David right there with the sheep? Yeah, that's his youngest son. David often watched his father's sheep. One time a lion grabbed a lamb. David went after the lion and hit it with a club. Then the lion dropped the lamb and ran after David. But David caught the lion by the part of his mane that came down around his chin and he killed the lion. Another time, David used his hands to kill a bear. Send for your youngest sons, Samuel said. So Jesse had David brought in from the fields. The Lord said to Samuel, anoint him for this is the one. So Samuel poured oil on David's head. Then the Lord sent his Holy Spirit into David's heart to make him wise and good. Good spirits like angels serve God. God tells Samuel to look for a new king. God sends him to Jesse's house to find a king among Jesse's sons. Samuel looks at the oldest, the strongest looking one and immediately thinks that he is the one that God wants king. But Samuel is wrong. He is judging Eliab by his good looks and muscles. God tells Samuel, both in the scripture and in the Bible story that I just read, that God does not see people as humans see people. God looks at what's inside a person, what's inside their hearts. Now, let, let me explain a little bit, because when it says that God looks at the heart, it's not like God's looking at the heart like the doctor does. A doctor puts you under an x-ray and he can see all your insides and he sees your heart. It's big and red and it's beeping, a beating, boom, 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 boom. No, that's not the way God looks at our hearts. God knows the gifts and love that we have inside us. And that is what God focuses on. Now, Samuel right away saw a tall, handsome young man and, and assumed that this is what God wanted in a king. But God has no requirements on how you look on the outside. So I want to give you a little example here. See, 
Hope you can see them. I have two packages here. One, a big, bright, shiny one with a big, beautiful bow on it. Oh, wow, really pretty. Then you have this old, beat up, crumpled paper bag. Oh, even has an ugly face on it. Eee, yeah. Now, when most people are asked, which one would you choose? Most people would get, go with the silver bag, the, the one with the river, the one that's all pretty on the inside. They probably wouldn't even take a look at old Mr. Grumpy bag over here. But you see, that's what Samuel did. Not once, not twice, but to all sevens of Jesse's sons. Samuel was assuming that this is what God wants. And that's where most of us make our mistakes. Thinking we know God's mind, but God's mind is way beyond what we ever could imagine. So let, let's look at these gifts a little bit more closely. Now see, here's this pretty beautiful gift, all shiny and everything, and people pick that. And when we look inside, Oh, nothing but old papers, old useless papers. Oh, nothing in here that we could use. Nothing that is useful. But then we take a look at the little old, old raggedy, crumply bag. The bag that probably no one ever wants to look at and just just don't even recognize. But aha, look what's in this bag. Woo, a toy, wow, candy. Oh man, look at this, look at this, jelly beans, all this good stuff. In this old, lovely bag. But you see, the good stuff. That's exactly what God sees in us. The good stuff in our hearts. What if we would see people as God sees them? Taking a deeper look at what's beyond their wrapper. What's beyond their outside self. And look into their heart. God saw the heart of David even at a young age. David was probably no more than 10 or 11, but he had courage. He had strength. He had faith. He had God. It was God who gave him the wisdom of the spirit, the Holy Spirit, to make David wise and good. How else could a young boy tend to his father's sheep, hit a lion, kill a lion, and even kill a bear without God on his side? It was God who did this. And it was God who chose David and grew him into a man after God's own heart. And he made David king. After God's own heart. What, what does that mean? What does that mean to you? After God's own heart. Well, it probably means a lot of things. Perhaps it means that your life is in tune with God. What is important to God is important to you. What hurts you hurts God. It means you have a heart for God. You have a deep desire to follow the will of God. Having a heart of God means having absolute faith in God. 
Now, last week, Reverend Kamal, we gave a powerful sermon about listening for God's leading. Pastor told the story of Samuel, also a young boy in the Bible, like David, a, a child who was called by God. Samuel didn't know exactly who was calling him, but with a little nudging by Eli, Samuel answered the call. Then Reverend Kamal told us about how he was in his 30s when he got the call. He wasn't a young boy like Samuel or David, and he needed a little nudging. In fact, he needed a lot. Then after being constantly pestered to preach, pastor keeps saying, no, 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 I'm not going to do this. The Reverend finally said yes and began preaching. Then as he began preaching, he said something came over him, something like he said, the power of the Holy Spirit. And he felt something like electric shocks going through his body. That's, that's like the Holy Spirit when, when it's just all like a fire just balled up in your soul and you just got to get it out. And Reverend Kamal knew then it was God calling him. And he said, yes. God saw a pastor's heart. Little shepherd boy, David, anointed by the oil of God, was chosen to be king, not by his looks or his young age, but because God knew David's heart and David said yes. People see only on the outside. But God sees our heart. God knows when we are sick or tired, but try to act like we're not. God knows when someone has made us mad or made us feel bad, and we try to play it off or maybe hide it. God knows when we're all dressed up on the outside, but our hearts are not dressed in love and faith. God looks at our hearts for our true self, for true value of our true self. And you can't hide because God knows all. Just as God chose Samuel at a, Samuel at a young age, David at about 10 or 11, Reverend Kamal at the age of 30, and even me at 60, I'm not going to tell you the rest. God chooses all of us to do amazing things for him. It doesn't matter what we look like. If we are big or tall, short or small, young or old, we all have a purpose in the kingdom of God. He looks past our human hearts, hearts that might be hardened by things in life, hearts that may be broken by someone or something, or even those think we are not good enough hearts. God looks into our God hearts, the heart God made to look just like him. God works in our lives every day to open our minds and our hearts to love, serve, and see people just as God sees them through their growing God hearts. All of you children here, all you children that participated today in today's service, you were chosen by God. God sees that you want to serve him and serve the community. Reading, singing, participating in the worship service. God sees your heart. Halloween is approaching. And many may be dressing up in costumes. Princess, witches, monsters, superheroes. 
sometimes on Halloween when people dress up, they tend to act like their costume. The little princess wants to be all beautiful and shiny and take notice and everything. The witch might be one to play jokes on somebody. The monster might be that one lurking in around the corner and wants to scare you. Or the superhero that wants to come and just show off his muscles and how he could save you. But if you go out and dress in costume, no matter how you look on the outside, remember your God, your God heart. Now I want to give you a little challenge for this week. As you get dressed to go to school, to the store, wherever you're going, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and ask, do I look as good on the inside to God as I look on the outside to others? Am I more concerned about what people see on the outside or am I concerned more about what God sees on the inside? God looks into our hearts. What does God see in yours? The word of God for the children of God. Amen. And now we have come to that time to call you, invite you to Christian discipleship. God knows your heart. He knows that you're probably thinking about where can I go? Where can I go so I can just let God see my heart and do good things? Where can I go so I can learn more about God? Where can I go? If you're looking for a church home, come right here. Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church. Where we're small enough to know you, but large enough to serve you and God. Come, let us walk with you. Come be a part of this beautiful membership. God's congregation. If you are interested in joining Sojourner Truth Presbyterian Church, you could always send an email to our pastor at cheechelder at gmail.com. And on the subject line, put membership. And you will sure to get a call or an email back. Now, another way that God is calling you and looking in your heart is through offering. Offering of your time, your talent, and your treasures. Now, there are five ways to give the offering. You will see them up on the screen, but one way is to go to our website, sojournertruthpchurch.org and hit the donate button. You can mail your check to Sojourner Truth at 2621 Shane Drive, Richmond, California, 940-948-06. And if you're in the neighborhood and you just you know, you're feeling nostalgic and just want to go by the church and see the church. You could drop off your offering in the mail slot on the green door of the fellowship hall. And if you're like me and have been buying a lot of things while you're sitting in the house, you could go to Google Smile and be on there and they will send a portion of your products that you bought. They will send a portion of that to Sojourner Truth at Amazon Smile, go to Amazon Smile. And you can also go to Givelify. You go to Givelify and put your offerings there. So those are all the ways that you could give back to God, just a portion of what he has given you. And now it is a time for the offertory prayer. And then you will hear the doxology by Layla Stevens. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you can satisfy our everyday desire and need. 
Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. Accept our tithes and offerings as a gift of worship to you. Multiply what we give for the effective growth of your kingdom. These things we ask in the name of the Father. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise God, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Layla. Thank you, Layla. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. And for now, for our closing hymn, lift every voice and sing. Please join us for the commission and blessing. Be glad and rejoice in God's wondrous works. Praise God whose spirit blesses and empowers us. God forgives our transgressions and answers our prayers. God delivers us from pre, pre, pretense and false pride. God stands by us to grant support and strength. God is the ever-present source of hope and healing. God rescues us from evil attack, from the lion's mouth. God is with us times suffering and loss. Return to your homes justified, praising God. Return to your world proclaiming good news for all to hear. All who trust in God are straightened and blessed to God be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you all for joining us with this wonderful youth worship service. I want to thank our youth choir director, James Daly for providing the music. I want to take, just thank these beautiful children. God has just sent us these children and they are just growing. They are growing. I mean, they're reading like, oh my gosh. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's amazing to see their growth, the growth in Christ, the growth in their faith. Yes, yes, it's such a beautiful thing. And they know that God does look into their hearts. I'd like to say thank you to Kay and Pella, to Jada Oates, James Oates, Messiah Oates, Layla Stevens, and our brand new newcomer, Amaya. Amaya, I mean, 
you did wonderful. I mean, you read like you've been doing this all along. Praise God. Thank God for all of you. Until we meet again, until we meet again, be blessed. Stay safe. God be with you. Bye-bye.